morning and welcome to our God's Word for today devotional. Thank God it's Friday and to be better today, God is first, TGIF. And let's make God first today by reading the scriptures and meditate on it. And let's read our text today in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 13, verses 24 to 35. This, this is the continuation to Paul's preaching. And let me read these verses from our English Standard Version. Before his coming, John had proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. No, but behold, after me one is coming. The sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Brothers, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God, to us has been sent the message of this salvation for those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not recognize him nor understand the utterances of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, fulfill them by condemning him. And though they found in him no guilt worthy of death, they asked Pilate to have him executed. And when they had carried out all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witnesses to the people. And we bring you the good news that what God promised to the fathers, this he has fulfilled to us their children by raising Jesus, as also it is written in the second psalm. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And as for the fact that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption, he has spoken this way. I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Therefore, he says also in another psalm, you will not let your Holy One see corruption. Now, Paul continued his historical account of the gospel, how Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophetic um, declarations in the past, in the Old Testament. He unpacked the history, how the Messiah is revealed. And here, he continued that, saying that God raised John the Baptist to preach baptism of repentance. And John the Baptist was very focused, laser focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, that I am not he. He is the one. He is the one coming. And he was evading himself not to, um, to, to get and rob the glory from the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was emphasizing that, behold the Lamb of God. You repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. That's what his message was. Yet it fell to deaf ears among the Jews. In fact, even when Jesus came into the picture already during his public ministry, the Jews continued to vehemently reject and oppose him. They did not recognize Jesus, nor understand the utterances of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath. So they were just gathering every Sabbath at the synagogues. But they didn't realize that Jesus was the Messiah and had fulfilled what they were reading. So Paul commented about this by saying in Romans 10 verse 2, For I bear them witness, this talks about the Jews who are unbelieving, for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. So this is something very sad because there are so many people today like the Jews that they are so zealous about their religion, about their about their beliefs, but they are sincerely wrong. They might be jealous. Maybe as you listen today, as you watch the video today, perhaps you are very sincere of your religion. Perhaps you are very sincere of your faith, but it cannot save you. It cannot amount to anything to you unless you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, unless you trust in him because he's the only way, the truth and the life. 
No man can go to the Father except through him. So they were oblivious. They didn't know what they were doing, but they were accountable because although they, they thought that they were doing what is right, the rejection was, was a clear rejection to the clear truth that they were, they were, they were presented to. But the rejection had fulfilled the promise. Jesus was mobbed, wrongly accused, and humiliated among his own people so that they crucified him. So this was the fulfillment of what the Lord has promised through the prophets in the Old Testament. Because without all this, Jesus should not have died. Jesus should not have been crucified. And there would be no resurrection from the death, from death. There should not be a there should not be a victory over sin, death, and hell. Thus, everything happened for the purpose of God's redemption. As the psalmist had declared in Psalm 76, verse 10, surely the wrath of man shall praise you, the remnant of wrath you will put on like a belt. Means, my brethren and friends in the Lord, means that nothing happened that is not perfectly fitted into the puzzle that can make the plan of God complete. So it's all written in the scriptures. Scriptures can be wrong. Now here, Paul had quoted Psalm chapter 2, Isaiah 55, and Psalm 16. And what was written and was, what, what, what were written, what were quoted by, by Paul here, is a, uh, they, they, they are sure testimonies that Jesus' coming is not incidental. It's not accidental even. It's part of the plan of God. So here Paul had showed the relationship between God and that the Savior, Jesus, is the Son of God the Father. He is the begotten Son of the Father. Means that God and, and God the Father and God the Son had an eternal relationship. We believe the trion, the triunity of God. God is one, yet in three persons. This refers to the broader sense of Jesus' whole ministry and mission that God the Father gave his only begotten Son as declared in John chapter 3, verse 16. And Paul even mentioned that the blessings that God has promised to David was everlasting and sure. It was unilateral, means that when God has promised to, to, to David, he will fulfill it. It's not conditioned by what man will do because God is trustworthy, God is faithful. Jesus being the Holy One of God was raised from the dead and did not see corruption or decay as promised. And Paul quoted this in Psalm 16, verse 10. And interestingly, perhaps you still are, doubt, are doubtful over, over this. Interestingly, in Luke chapter 24, verse 44, Jesus himself, after the resurrection, claimed that he is the fulfillment of what the scriptures had said. While he was speaking, nobody knew that he was Jesus. And he said, this to those who are around him. These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So everything that, is, that was written about the Messiah in the book of Moses and the prophets and Psalms. That's why Paul heavily had quoted the book of Psalms, the prophets here. Because Jesus is the fulfillment. Now, what does this mean to you and to me today? Now, if you are a Christian, we should marvel. We should not forget. We should not, we said, we should not, we should not neglect to rehearse in our mind the, the, the faithfulness of God. That's glory always on God's faithfulness. Because of what he did because he orchestrated everything because 
history is history. The gospel was finally revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are recipients of it. And we pray that we will be faithful in response to his faithfulness. Or being faithful in fulfilling his covenant to his own people. And this covenant not only was fulfilled to the Jews per se, but his plan is that the redemption, the plan of salvation will be offered to all in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever will believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We love him because he first loved us. We should be faithful to him because he is trustworthy and faithful. The very reason why we are so encouraged to continue to serve God, because our God is faithful. Whatever he said, he's going to do it. Let us be encouraged with the word of God today. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that we can be refreshed about this, about this truth, Lord, that Jesus, although he was rejected by men, we can see the wickedness of people, accusing him, crucifying him when he was sinless, yet it was part of the plan. Of, it was part of your purpose, Lord, that we'll die, he will die with that kind of horrible death in order for us to be free, in order for us to be forgiven, so that the power of darkness, sin, hell, and death, even Satan, will have no bearing at all anymore. We are free, and we are free indeed in Christ. So bless us to our hearts, Lord, today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.